Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the minister is, Mr. Chair, in effect, the, the mayor and council of a key neighborhood in my community, the University Endowment Lands. Uh, as the minister is aware, the UEL has received an unprecedented rezoning application uh, from the Musqueam people for an area called Block F, which proposes potentially to double uh, the current population of the U University Endowment Lands. Uh, the UEL official community plan, unfortunately, is very out of date and is not responsive to major project proposals like Block F. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, that remains uh, the case and it doesn't seem to be changing soon. So as a result, the Community Advisory Committee at the University Endowment Lands has struck a project-based Block F working group to try to incorporate some level of community vision for the future into the Block F planning process. The group's made up of three members of the council plus nine members from the community at large. The success of the working group really depends on the cooperation of the ministry and consultants with this group. Can the minister assure the community that the ministry consultants and the ministry staff will cooperate with the community advisory council's Block F working group and ensure that the working group's activities and feedback are incorporated into the rezoning process? Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for the question. Um, staff uh, of the UEL administration and our consultation team have met uh, with this working group um, of Block F um, in the past two weeks, and I will absolutely assure you that we will continue to work with this group and uh, ensure that uh, the community voice is important and that it is heard. Member. Thank the Minister very much for that, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the second question also relates to the UEL and a request for an incorporation study. Uh, during the last estimates process, the minister uh, advised me, Mr. Chair, that if there was consensus on governance reform on the peninsula, that her office would listen and respond. I'm told that a proposal for an incorporation study uh, that comes from the elected University Endowment Land Community Advisory Council is on the minister's desk. Uh, it's been there for almost five months now, since November, and uh, there hasn't been a response. The government Governance reform will be much easier to do now before the population of the UEL doubles. Um, will the minister respond to this request from the community for an incorporation study, and will her response ensure that the minister can focus on provincial issues instead of thinking about rezoning in the UEL? <laughs> Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the question. Um, as you well can imagine, the UEL is a complex and unique governance structure. 
and uh, with many varied interests involved. And it's an area facing great change and due to development, demographic, and other shifts. So it's important first for us to understand the state of the UEL. Um, to get a sense of through the appreciation of the current arrangements and implications. Uh, so the work that we're currently doing right now are um, gathering the facts about the current state of the UEL and understanding where the temperature is to move forward. Uh, Member, uh, could the minister uh, clarify which steps her ministry will be taking to take that temperature because the elected representatives and uh, a large uh, majority at the most recent meeting asked for this incorporation study. So what other indicators will the minister be looking for and, and how is she going to find them? Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the question. Uh, some of the uh, um, things that we're currently looking at on the fact-finding information that we need to address is we have to start looking at what the service relationships look like. Of course, we're looking at a, a unique area that's in a peninsula that um, has other service relationships. Um, there's financing. Um, there's, you know, where are the trunk sewer lines? Where are the trunk water lines? Who owns it? Where, what is the scope of that? Um, policing, how does the policing, how is that going to be managed within the scope of, of the current system? The transportation, who owns which roads? And so those are the, that we have consultants on the ground right now that are currently gathering that information so that we can start to really move this forward in a very clear, comprehensive way.